You're listening to Why We Do What We Do. Welcome to Why We Do What We Do, Mini. I'm your host, Abraham. And I'm your host, Shane. We are going to talk about money stuff, how you do it, what you do it. Oh my gosh. Why we do it. So much money stuff. Yeah. So much money stuff today. But more like a gambling type money stuff, but a state sanctioned, government sanctioned gambling with the state type government, like money stuff. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever do this thing? I don't actually think I've ever done the lottery. Living in a state that has legalized gambling ubiquitously, I have definitely done quite a bit of gambling, but I have not. I don't think I've done the lottery specifically, although I used to buy those scratcher tickets uh, when I lived in states that did not have legalized gambling. Yeah. Just scratch that itch. Yeah, that makes sense. The state of Florida is like very like the lottery is a big deal here and it's always been a big deal. So uh, and sure. we'll talk about that. But yeah, it's the, the so we're basically talking about the lottery today yeah. and why people do lotteries and not the book, the lottery, which involved stoning somebody to death or the story, the short story. Right. I am not familiar with this one, but that sounds lovely. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. The prize is that you get stoned to death at the end is like a sacrifice for the town. Like uh, Hunger Games, but for... But scary. Even less reason, maybe. Yeah, the Hunger Games, but with more rocks. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what the lottery is. The lottery is a means of raising money by selling numbered tickets and giving prizes to the holders of numbers drawn at random. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's really what it is. So the basic process is this. You go in, you select a set of numbers. Many people do the same thing in that in that context. You do this because there is a prize that you can win. Someone selects a random number or a series of numbers from a pool of numbers. And if your number or numbers match what are selected, you get paid lots and lots and lots of money and or prizes, but mostly money. So people put in just a little bit of money. They can put out essentially as much as they want, which can be zero and just not get a lottery ticket. And they're they're hoping to get some kind of return on the investment. So you put in a little bit of money, there's the chance of a gigantic, gigantic prize. And so in the United States, the money that people put in generates $98 billion in revenue, uh-huh. with roughly 65% of that money going back to winners of said lotteries. And the rest, of course means that there's roughly $34 billion generated by lotteries that gets kept by the state. Honestly, I thought it would be more. I'm actually surprised it's not as much. I thought it was like way less than I was. I was surprised by how little they, they bring in. Yeah, um, I, I think honestly, it does kind of make sense if you think about just like all the various revenue streams that there are that exist for sort of a government. Yeah, in my mind, but but you're right. I, I also would have thought that number would have been a little higher given the kinds of money that they throw around. Yeah. Now, if you've ever been part of a raffle, then that's kind of a form of a lottery. Like you get a ticket, they call out a number at random and you get whatever cash prize at the end. But specifically, we're talking about this idea of like using funds from the people as like a government process to help fund certain projects and stuff like that. So like basically you are a citizen, you pay to get into this lottery, you're going to get some prize as a result of it. But the rest of the money that doesn't go to you as the cash prize is going to go to funding some project or some kind of service. Now, this is something I did not know is where this this originated, but as with most things, it seems, the first known lottery to take place occurred in the Chinese Han Dynasty between 205 and 187 BCE. And as I said, with most things, what I just mean is it seems to have originated in China. Right. And they used these Kino slips, which was the original lottery that might have been used to help fund projects such as the Great Wall of China. Yeah, isn't that wild? The Great Wall of China was like partially funded by (laughs) government lotteries. This wall brought to you by lottery. Uh Uh-huh. And also there's uh, an ancestor of yours in that wall. Yeah. And yeah, an enormous (laughs) amount of like worker abuse and slavery too. Yeah, not not a great, not a great wall when you really think about it. But the Kino slip, so just to kind of go back to that, Kino slip is a sheet that you would use to select numbers for your lottery ticket. It looks like a long kind of like almost like a like a scantron, if you're familiar with those, where there's like multiple lines and multiple numbers on it, and you circle or color in the numbers that you would like to select for that lottery. And kino, the word kino comes from French or Latin roots, from the specific word kini, or Q-U-I-N-I, meaning five each. So modern lotteries are used to fund projects and community needs. For instance, in Florida, the lottery helps put money back into public schools and debt services so that they can send in uh, exterminators to help get rid of all those pesky books and learnings. Uh-huh. They don't like words. No, they don't like words. They don't like education there. Maybe guns is what that's paying for in schools? Uh, Unclear. 
No, nah, I don't know for Florida. Texas for sure. Oh, okay. But Florida's weird. I think knives. I think there's more knives here than anything. Got it. Got it. Knives. Okay. It's a strange place. And apparently lotteries can even help pay for college. Yeah. So I actually got, um, when I was in high school, I got a bright, it's something called a bright future scholarship. And the bright future scholarship is mostly funded by the lottery. Oh, nice. So we, yeah. um, when I was in high school, I got a, a scholarship for college that was called, I think the millennial scholarship, but that was largely funded by tobacco companies. Oh, interesting. It's weird how, uh, these like kind of harmful programs could put people through college. Yeah. Speaking of harmful programs, here's an ad. All right. So we want to know how can you win the lottery and like, why haven't you won the lottery yet? Because if you have, you're probably not listening to this podcast. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably haven't won the lottery Yeah. except for the podcast lottery. Congratulations for winning that by finding us. <laughs> yep. yep, you're welcome. We are we are a real prize. But this is because the odds of you winning the lottery are slim, dismal huh. even. You are more likely to have several of the following experiences. Let's go ahead and list these off in turn-taking fashion. <laughs> yeah, you are more likely to die from an asteroid strike, which is bonkers. And that is 1 in 74,817,414. So just to kind of give you an idea, 1 in 75 million. And you have more of a chance of that than the lottery. You have more of a chance of becoming a movie star, which is arguably more lucrative, depending on how much of a star you are. And that's a 1 in 1,505,000 chance. Yep. You're more likely to get struck by lightning, which is a 1 in 1.1 million chance. You are more likely to bowl a 300 game, which arguably is a lot of skill, but even then, there's some amount of luck involved, and that's a 1 in 11,500 chance. Right. And so winning the lottery in a pool of six, where you have six numbers to select from, you have a 1 in 13,983,816 chance. So about 1 in 14 million chance out of a six number lottery. However, if it's a pool of seven numbers, your chances grow exponent uh, like they are like way slimmer. It goes to the tune of one in five hundred and three billion. Yes, that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, not a lot, arguably, <laughs> depending yeah, on what you're yeah, thinking about. The the odds are like you're not you're just not gonna get it. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna get it. And then it gets worse when you get into like when the when the prize grows and more people participate. Yeah, you're even less likely. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Now, th- there's actually something fun that that's not really it's beyond the scope of this conversation to talk about. But there's sort of there's something called a lottery lo- logical fallacy that has to do with the fact that like the odds of it happening to one person, as we said, are astronomically small. The odds of it happening to someone are nearly a hundred percent. Right. Like it's almost guaranteed that it's going to hit. That it's going to happen to you is very odd. And I think people have a hard time wrapping their minds around that sort of paradox. Right. But it is sort of how things work. So anyway, just, just food for thought on there. Yeah. But you might be asking yourself, why is this psychology podcast talking about the lottery? Have you guys completely lost it? Have you run out of ideas? No, we actually do have a reason for this. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. So why do people do the lottery? You may be thinking, well, I do it because like, it would be cool to get a chance to win this and whatever. But the, the risk when you think about it is actually fairly low. A lot of ticket can cost anywhere between one and 20 bucks, depending on how much you want to put into it. Most lottery tickets, when you're just selecting a couple numbers is a, is a dollar. Yeah. The more you spend, the more chances you get, obviously it's not a huge loss, but the reward is actually pretty great. When you think about it overall, I spend a dollar and I have a chance of becoming a billionaire. That's actually like a pretty good kind of trade off. Yeah, exactly. It's real. It's it's low risk. It's high reward. It's a very small commitment to make financially. Yeah. In some instances, partial matches will pay out as well. So even if you didn't get a complete match, you might get a partial payout match. So you might not win the big bundle, but you might win a few hundred bucks. And that's for you spend a dollar, maybe even as much as twenty dollars, and you match three numbers. Or like, let's just say you spent that that dollar. That's not too shabby. Spend a dollar, get two hundred, two or three hundred dollars. That's a huge return on investment, percentage wise. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that makes sense. So like, if you win every now and again, you're going to, you're going to keep going back to it. Now, some scientists also describe something called a rescue fantasy. And essentially what this is, is the idea that you participate because if I can get rich, I can get out of the situation. I'm going to get out of town. I'm going to, I just need this like nest egg. I need this thing to go. And people think that that's, that's a big part of the, the engagement with that too. 
So you might actually see that there is a relatively, uh, if there is a higher amount of financial pressure on someone, they actually might be more likely to risk their dollar in this investment than someone who yep. doesn't even need the money as much. Absolutely. But as you said, it's because the promise of a potential reward is so great that it's worth the small financial commitment for many people who are desperately looking for something. Right. Now, the other thing to consider here is that a lot of this lottery ticket buying that people do they do it ritually, like they every every week or even potentially every day or every month, they go in. And so this pattern of behavior gets rewarded in its basic, consistent interactions of just going through the motions of buying a ticket. And the ticket itself might start to become a sort of its own reward for some. Yeah. But there's also a, like some other social things that go along with this. So let's say you are buying your lottery ticket from a gas station, which Probably most people are. Yeah. You might know the clerk. You might sort of you go and pick up your favorite snack or your favorite drink when you're there. There's some anticipation to see when the names are getting called. There's sort of a little bit of fun game element to it that's sort of challenging. So there's just like a ton of other smaller little rewards that are built into the system that starts to, it just maintains that habit. It maintains the behavior. Even when people aren't winning, there's a lot of little rewards that sort of continue to pull it along and keep it going. Right. And also, too, because the reward is so great, like it's almost still worth putting the risk up because, again, the risk is so low. Right. Like so like there's all these little things that contribute to it. Now, exactly. Another thing, too, to think about is that the, as the payout increases, so do entries. And I kind of mentioned this earlier, but what this does is the more as the payout increases, you are going to have less chance because more people are going to enter, which means that there are more names in the pot, which means that there are it's less likely that you are going to be able to win in this. So it would be cool to win a lot of money. You're actually less likely to win as the pool gets bigger and you're more likely to win early on. So when you play at the very beginning, when it's like, you know, 24 million or something like that, right at the beginning, you're more likely to win at that stage than you would as more people enter the the lottery. So it's not actually that the probability of winning changes with how many people are playing, because like whatever numbers you pick are the numbers you pick. If it was just you playing versus a billion other people playing, like there's not actually a difference in whether or not those are your winning numbers. Right. The chance of you winning based on the numbers you select, the probability of you selecting the winning number doesn't change depending on how many people play. It's essentially right. like you have the same chances, whether it's 10 people to play over 100 people to play, because you're still having to select those numbers. The problem is, is that you have less of a chance of winning that full jackpot because the more people that get involved, the more chances there are that somebody will also select the same numbers that you select because you have more people in the pool. So that's the way that I would see that is something like that. Yeah, that does make sense. Now, as we've sort of already said, lottery is a form of gambling. Um, so we're sort of bringing it all back around to this. And this is a behavior that gets rewarded at random at variable times. And we get often just enough reward to keep that, that habit going, keep the behavior happening. There is a mountain of research on gambling. That's probably a whole episode worth discussing by itself. Yeah. Possibly several because there's there's how it forms, there's rehabilitation programs and various like behavioral interventions that have been developed. So gambling is it's a thing in its own right. But as we said, this is relatively low stakes gambling, but it is still a form of gambling because again, you're wagering some amount of money toward an outcome, and then you're waiting like by taking some action, in this case, selecting numbers, and then seeing, do those numbers then result in a big payout? Absolutely. Now, in relation to the lottery, there are a couple of interesting things I found as we were kind of going through this. First, the largest lottery payout was $2.04 billion, and that took place in November of 2022 in California. Nice. Just for all you gambling addicts out there, the most drawn number in the lottery is 38. Wild. 18 movies have been funded by lotteries, including The King's Speech and Billy Elliot. What? I did not know that at all. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, me neither. It's so crazy. U.S. lotteries have created 3,700 millionaires since 1994, which is a wildly large amount that makes this seem very plausible. Yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. And alternatives like scratch cards, like you mentioned before, or scratchers are, you know, the thing that we talk about, or Kino, they exist as ways to engage in simple gambling without playing the actual lottery. So there are like other ways to kind of participate in lottery processes without actually participating in the lottery. 
Yeah. So I think that's pretty much what we have to say about lotteries, though. As we said, it's sort of a relatively low stakes thing, but I would strongly caution you to not invest a lot in this because the odds of this meaning anything to you are basically none. If you can afford to <laughs> and you want to have fun, obviously, the, I, what I would do is uh, treat it as fun. Like treat this as like a an activity and sort of like a low stakes gamble where you're going to lose basically like 99.99% is not high enough of a guarantee to say you're going to lose. You're like, not quite at 100%, but so close, it may as well be 100%. Right, exactly. If you want to have fun, you want to, you have some like extra cash to spend, sure, go do it. But just don't get your hopes up. Maybe just imagine it as like an investment in you get to play a short little game and the money that you spend on it is going to help fund something powered by the state or maybe a movie or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a good way to look at it. Perfect. Well, then I think we have probably run this long enough. Do you have anything else before we close out? Nothing else. All right, then this mini is out. See ya. You've been listening to Why We Do What We Do. You can learn more about this and other episodes by going to www.wwdpodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and we hope you have an awesome day. 